What's up guys, Gabriel Varga here. Today we're talking about kickboxing versus Taekwondo. How do you beat somebody who moves around, balances like this, is throwing the side kicks, or throwing hook kicks, maybe spinning, whatever else they're doing. They're very good at their footwork. Essentially, how do you beat somebody like Steven Wonderboy Thompson or Raymond Daniels? And I've actually sat down with Raymond Daniels a number of times, had nice conversations when we were both fighting on the same cards, and he said to me a couple times, Man, your style is perfect for defeating mine. You're the kind of guy I don't want to fight. So I think this makes me perfect to explain to you guys exactly what you need to do if you're fighting a karate or taekwondo fighter who's going to be bouncing around. There's lots of things we can do. Let's chat about it today. All right guys, first let's break down this sort of stereotypical fighter who you might be competing against. If you are a Muay Thai fighter, you are a kickboxer, you're gonna be fighting somebody, if this is you, I'm the Taekwondo guy or the, the karate guy, very, very rarely you will see their hands up here. If their hands are up here, they're probably not bouncing around. I'm talking more about a Taekwondo or a karate guy who's gonna be bouncing, who's gonna be trying to cover distance very quick, angling off, getting in and out, utilizing their kicks, utilizing those spinning kicks. Those are the guys that are hard to deal with. Now, I have only fought one person in my whole career who had this background, this style, and I finished the fight super quick because his hand defense was not on point I got him up to the ring ropes I'll throw a clip up right now you can see I just worked and worked and worked down to the body down to the body up to the head and basically just had the fight stop before he got knocked out but it's not as simple as just that you have to have a number of other strategies put together and I want to start and talk about the Taekwondo style stance and generally when you see that when you see somebody squaring off against their opponent they're not having their chest in line, the way that a kickboxer or a Muay Thai fighter would, they have their chest sideways, their feet are facing sideways. This makes them much more mobile at going forwards and backwards and bouncing, but it also exposes them to the low kicks. So that's the first thing that you have to keep in mind. Joseph Valtellini did this very, very well against Raymond Daniels when he fought him, just trying to hack down that leg. But in all fairness, when I talked to Raymond Daniels the last couple of times, he said at that point in his career, he did not know how to check low kicks. He would never trained checking low kicks, which is just wild to me that he was even, even able to compete at that high level without knowing such a basic thing. But that is the strategy. That is the strategy to beat. Because when I am here and somebody low kicks at me, even if I get my leg up and it gets lifted, I'm still getting chopped and getting my leg elevated in the air the damage is going to be there it's going to score and more importantly it's going to throw off the guy's ability to get the counter kick off or move away but let's just pretend it's not as simple as that it's not as simple as just hacking down this guy's leg he's too mobile so the first thing we need to really talk about is how do we deal with a sidekick because that is a big big element of dealing with a karate or a taekwondo fighter if they're any good if they're not any good, then that doesn't really matter. But if they're moving around and every time you come forward, they're jamming you. You run in, they jam you. They're always on the go. They're, they're switching their stance, throwing those kicks. That is a hassle. That is a big, big hassle. If you are not prepared for the sidekick, and often kickboxers or Muay Thai fighters are not prepared for the sidekick because nobody throws it. We have a Thai sidekick. We have front kicks, maybe the spinning sidekick occasionally, but traditional sidekicks are not that common. So one of the most simple ways to deal with this is not to worry about catching, not to worry about scooping. Those are both great alternatives. Those are actually ones that if you're more advanced, you should be utilizing. But if you are more of a beginner, you have to make them pay. Every time they throw the sidekick, the sidekick comes, you block with your elbow, right away you return with the low kick. If you are good, and you are being effective with your forearm blocking, it's down the middle, they're not landing to the stomach, you're not gonna get that hurt getting side kicked in the forearms, but they're gonna get hurt getting chopped down. If it's a one for one, side kick off the forearms versus low kick, the low kick is going to win. The trick being you have to be fast enough. You can't have a kick hit you, wait, and then try and kick because they're gone. It needs to be blocked kick right away. If you can take this element away from a Taekwondo or Karate fighter, you have already done so much work to getting yourself close to that victory. On top of that, you need to know how to deal with the spinning techniques. The spinning techniques are a tricky point for some people, but let's remember that blocking a spinning hook kick and blocking a round kick to the same side 
are the exact same thing. If I throw a round kick right there, you block. If I throw a spinning hook kick, same thing, exact same block. Don't change anything up. Don't get stunned or freaked out when a spinning kick comes. Nine out of 10 times when you see a massive, awesome spinning knockdown, a highlight reel knockdown, maybe one that Raymond Daniels gets, it's because his opponent did something massively wrong. It's usually something like that. They disconnect their hands from their head, and as soon as they do that, all the kick has to do is get past those arms, and it's gonna land. Whenever somebody spins, all we're looking to do is keep our hands where they are and go to the same side where the kick is coming. I double up on my protection. If it might be a spinning side kick or a spinning hook kick, you're not sure, you just come down like this. You get that elbow in the way and you still protect your head. If you are being logical and you're not panicking, you will be safe from the spinning techniques. Same thing on something like a tornado kick. Somebody goes to throw a tornado kick, they come here and they go up and they're gonna jump and land that. Guess what? It's the exact same block that you always do for a basic head round kick. Deal with the side kicks, deal with the spinning techniques, and we are again that much closer to getting the victory. Now from here I don't want to talk just about defense because defense is only obviously half of this game. The offense is the other half and what a lot of people have trouble with when they fight Steven Thompson or they fight Raymond Daniels is actually cornering them because these guys have such great footwork. Your strategy might be, oh, I'm gonna run forward, I'm gonna throw a five piece combo and I'm gonna knock him out. But if you move forward, you throw one punch and they're gone, you don't get any combo happening. So how do we get our combos flowing against somebody who's constantly on the move? Well, I've talked about it a number of times. I'm gonna talk about it again now. We fake. If I'm at this distance here, way back here, where I know I'm out of sidekick range and I'm moving around, I'm bouncing, if I come straight in, they're probably gonna move. If I fake or fake a punch, they might move. If again, I recenter in front of them, I fake, they move. Eventually, they're gonna get warned or they're gonna get tired of running. Eventually, they're gonna settle down in front of you a little bit. Once they've done that, or maybe you throw and you go, okay, they didn't move, you fake, then you move on to your attack. Once you get them here, once you get them at this point where they're dealing with hands, in my experience, there's very few karate fighters, taekwondo fighters, who can properly fight out of here. If they can, they've evolved their style. I'm one of those people. I started as a karate fighter. I had no hand defense for long boxing combos. I've evolved. I've become better at it so that I can be a proper kickboxer. But if you're a proper kickboxer and you're fighting somebody who has not evolved their style, being right in here is what's going to work. The other thing you can do is, when we've seen it many times throughout history, Muay Thai fighters fight Taekwondo fighters, is just batter their body with the round kicks. They go to throw something, you know, it doesn't matter what the heck it is, and they just slam their shins into these Taekwondo fighters, just slamming it constantly, maybe set it up. But at this distance here where the sidekick lands, well, I can definitely land my own round kick. And Taekwondo fighters, karate fighters, they block with one arm. They don't do cross blocks. They don't get their leg up to check. That is a big error. If you enter a kickboxing ring without knowing how to do this, or this, or that, or that, you don't know how to take control of that leg. The body round kicks is a massive key to victory, along with clenching. They have no idea how to clench. If I can fake a shot, fake a shot, or just charge my way in, get control of the head, and then work them from here, they have nothing. They have no game from here. But ultimately, when you're fighting somebody who is a Taekwondo guy, they want to move. They want to move, they want to throw their legs. That is what their primary attack is going to be. If I fought somebody with a primarily kicking offense and their hands are most likely just going to be touch, single shot, touch, I would just have my hands here. They're not getting by my hands with my hands up like this with a single shot. They are definitely not gonna hit me to the head and KO me. The only danger here is the sidekick and the spinning sidekick and all I have to do is just bend my knees and drop, bring my elbows together. And of course the basic game plan of just closing the distance and just putting a hurting on them with the body shots and following with the low kicks Dutch style, that is gonna be a super effective tool. And guys, make no mistake, I have nothing against the karate fighters or the taekwondo fighters. It's just that if they're entering the sport of kickboxing, that's my sport, I want the kickboxer to win. I want us to do well. If I went to compete in taekwondo, I wouldn't be like, oh yeah, I'm gonna have a massive chance of winning this fight. They should probably win because that's what they're experts at. We are experts at kickboxing. If they wanna come over and play our game, we need to teach them a lesson or two. And the last thing I want you to keep in mind is very often when they throw their punches, they are coming from the bouncing position 
here or here. The chin is very high, the other hand is very low. It's very rare to see them come in this position where my shoulder's protected, my jaw on one side, my hand's protecting, my jaw on the other, the chin is tucked. If they do all that, they are hard to counter. If somebody keeps their chin up, you should be working every time they come to throw a punch, head off the center line, counter shot. Bang them hard with the counter shot, and then from there you get into your combo work, which is what they will not like. And guys, if there's somebody out there who has a fight coming up against a karate guy, a taekwondo fighter, I hope this video really helps you. If you think it's going to, give it a like, get subscribed if you haven't already, train hard guys, and I'll see you back here soon for another video.